Winterhaven Christian, my name is Sean. I get to be the youth pastor at Winterhaven Worship Center. I'm Charlie and Oliver's dad. I always have to throw that out there because I'm very proud to be their dad. But uh, it's a humongous honor to be able to do chapel. And I know it's virtual, but it's cool that we still get to do this. Uh, we got to make the best of what's happening right now. So it's very cool that you're doing chapel through YouTube and you have different speakers. And so, but it's just an honor and a lot of fun to do stuff like this. So um, I was told we're talking about the fruit of the spirit and so which is really cool because i actually did a devo for the grown-ups about uh like a week ago on instagram live so this is actually perfect that they asked me to do this i spoke on kindness but today we're going to talk about peace and it says in galatians 5 22 through 23 it says but the holy spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. There is no law against these things. So now, of course, it's really hard to get all those in one day, but of course we wanna strive and really, really try our hardest to do every single one of those, to be really conscious and always thinking that we have love, joy, peace, self-control, gentleness. That's to your family, your friends, your teachers, everybody. And so today we're talking about peace. Now. When I think about peace, you know, I think of, you know, calm and chill, you know, I kind of think like, you know, like the surfer in every movie, like, what's up, bro? You know, I'm super chill surfing the waves, you know, like, you know, that was lame. But, you know, that's how I think of, of like, like peace, like chill, you know, or when I think of peace, I think of when my kids, Charlie and Oliver and Sawyer, they tell Alexa to play rain sounds and like thunderstorms as they go to bed, you know, because that's super duper relaxing for me, you know, you know, something super relaxing for me as well is like my favorite kind of music. I love like orchestra symphony music like dramatic movie music without lyrics and like i just you know that's what relaxes me but today i want to go even further on peace you know on what god is talking about when he talks about peace in the bible i want to talk about how things can be peaceful versus peace god gives us when you're not relaxed you know sunsets also who loves sunset i love a sunset maybe you love a sunrise the only thing about sunrises i have to wake up a sunset i'm already awake you know what i'm saying but sunsets are beautiful because it's like pink and purple and orange and all that kind of stuff and the clouds look really cool and it's just kind of like ah oh, even if you had a hard day the sunset's so nice you know what i'm saying and like you know like we're talking about your music and whatnot but what about when you're having one of your worst days or maybe your brothers and sisters are driving you crazy, or maybe you're scared of what's going on, maybe with the coronavirus or anything like that. And you know what, all that stuff is definitely not peaceful. But God said he'll give you peace in the chaos and the crazy. Peace when you're scared, peace when you're upset. He will help you relax and have joy. And just like love is an action, because you can say you love somebody, but you have to show somebody that you love them. So is peace. You have to decide it and really trust God that you will trust him, that he can give you peace and you can relax because of his love and his presence and his power. It says in Isaiah 26, 3, oh, trying to skip here. It says, God give you, or I'm sorry, Isaiah 26, 23 says, God, you give true peace to people who depend on you, to those who trust in you. So even though your situation, your life, you know, the world may be really, really crazy. We have to depend on God and make the decision, say, God, no matter how crazy life is right now, I trust in you and that's going to give you peace. And you're going to go, oh, and that's what God can do for you. There's a really cool story about Peter. Now, Peter was one of Jesus' disciples. We know Peter, uh, he walked on water. Jesus denied, or Peter denied Jesus three times. We know those. But there's a story about Peter that we don't hear a lot. But what happened was one of his friends, another disciple of Jesus, James, was actually just killed for being a believer in Jesus Christ, that he was the son of God and our Savior. Now, people were crazy back then. They didn't believe Jesus was the son of God. So they were angry at people like James and Peter. Unfortunately, James was just killed and so now they're hunting after Peter to arrest him and of course if someone's hunting you down to arrest you you're gonna be super duper scared you're gonna be worried nothing's peaceful about that and so what they do is they capture him they imprison him they put him in jail they uh, they handcuff handcuff him to two prisoners and then he's got like four guards and so you could you I mean like if we be we all be freaking out right 
And so, and as well, his friends in the church, they were really upset. They were really scared. They're like, you know what? We have to pray. We have to pray for a miracle. And so what they did is they made the decision, even though they were super scared, at the same time being scared, they were going to depend and trust in God for peace. And that peace turned into faith. And so they started praying for Peter. Now, Peter, it says in scripture that he actually fell asleep. So Peter had to be trusting God too, because, you know, the day before you would go for a trial and you don't want to end up like your friend James, he had to have peace and faith in God to trust him that, you know what, the situation is really bad, but something's going to work out. So he went to sleep. So guess what? This is really crazy. This is really crazy and really cool. As the church and his friends were praying, an angel appeared to Peter. He said, Peter, let's get out of here. And his, his shackles fell. The guards, I guess they were oblivious. Peter was just like, is this a dream, a vision? Is this real life? And it really was. And the angel led him out of prison. The gates opened and he led him to his friend's house. And this is crazy. And Peter's like, is this real? And the angel's like, yeah, bye. And so now he's trying to knock on this door and he's like, guys, let me in, guys, let me in. I'm, I'm, out, I'm, out, of, I'm out of prison. This, this girl comes and she's like, oh my gosh, it's Peter. And she was so excited that it was Peter. She forgot to actually let Peter in the house because he just escaped jail. Like he's, he's got to hide. He ran and told the people and he's like, Peter's here, Peter's here. And they're like, there's no way Peter's here. And she's like, Peter is here. And they're like, okay, let's go see. And sure enough, it was Peter. And the thing is we can have peace and be scared at the same time because being scared, being stressed, being aggravated, whatever it may be, is a normal emotion, but we can overcome that stuff at the same time, trusting in God, having faith in him that we can have peace and go, God, you've got this. You know, Peter was not in a peaceful situation and neither were the church people, but they made the decision. Maybe they were freaking out, but not to freak out, but to trust in God and pray. And so, you know, like I said, Peter had to be definitely at peace to fall asleep that night. And so, you know, there's a really cool story also that I read about a king who had a contest. All right. And so he had a contest. He says, I want everyone to paint the most beautiful picture that would really explain or really would show a peace, would show peace. They're like paint a picture that would really describe what peace is. And so it came down to two different pictures. One picture was these beautiful mountains. They were snow capped. They were just, they were just, you know, just breathtaking. There was like a lake, and you could the lake was so calm and still and peaceful. You could see the reflection of the mountains, and the sky was awesome. And it was just, it was just beautiful. It just, it just puts you at ease. And then the second picture, because there was two pictures, and he had to pick one. There was only two left. And but this picture kind of had an angry sky. It looked like it was about to storm. And the mountains, you know, they were just kind of plain. There was nothing too special about it. And the the lake wasn't, you know, calm, but it looked like it was real windy and stormy. And then there was this really big waterfall that, if you could imagine it in real life, if you've been close to a big waterfall, they're super duper loud and it was roaring. But off to the side, where you know where these where these rocks were by the water fountain. On the second painting, there's this little bush, but on this little bush was a nest and it was a mama bird and a baby bird. And the thing is, they weren't in distress. They weren't worried about the storm and the loud uh, waterfall or anything like that. But the mom was taking care of the baby. And so instead of picking the picture that was peaceful because it had beautiful mountains, beautiful sky, beautiful lake, he picked the picture with the baby bird in the, in, in, within the storm and the wind and the loud waterfall that that is a true description of peace. That really explains peace because peace is trusting in God when there's chaos, when there's crazy, when it's loud, when we're worried, when there's fear. That is peace. There's a difference between a peaceful situation in choosing, in choosing peace when things are really scary. And so that person won. And I thought that was a really good story because that really explains what peace is, practicing peace, trusting in God. Because if our whole life was peaceful and we never had stress and we never had worry, we would never have to practice peace. It would just be peaceful. But we know life is hard sometimes and so we have to practice peace. And so, it's not, I mean, it's hard not to worry about things, but if we love God enough to know that by the Holy Spirit and our faith that we can have peace when life is really hard and stressful, He will come through every single time. And when you have a hard day, you can smile and say, God, I know it's gonna be okay because I trust in you. When you go home and it's really stressful, you're gonna smile and say, God, give me peace and patience. Today can still be a great day. If you start to get scared about anything, you can smile and say, God, I know you can protect me because I trust you and I have faith. And it says in 2 Thessalonians, whoop, I can say that. 2 Thessalonians 3.16, it says, Now may the Lord of peace himself, God is peace himself, give you his peace. So God, who being, 
his peace. He's giving it to you. It says, give you peace at all times and in every situation. It says, the Lord will be with you all. No matter what you're going through, how hard life is, school, work, home. Well, you don't work yet, but your parents go to work. But no matter how crazy things get, just know that you can depend and trust in God to give you peace. You can take that deep breath and say, God, I trust you. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we love you so much. And Lord, in times like this, we really need to practice peace. A lot of times things are not very peaceful, but Father, practicing real peace, Lord, is Father in the chaos and the crazy and the stressful, Lord, saying that we depend on you, we have faith in you. We know, Lord, that you love us enough that we can take a deep breath and we can relax. And Father, we can still have love and we can still have joy and we can still enjoy life because Father, we are blessed that we have breath in our lungs. We wake up every morning, Father. We have family, friends, and we have an amazing school to go to. So Lord, we love you for that. And Father, we're gonna practice all these fruits of the Spirit, Father, so that we can produce good things in our lives and so, Father, that we can help others because, Lord, that's how you want it to happen. That's what you want us to do. So, Lord, we thank you, and I ask that these students are blessed today and the rest of the week. In the name of Jesus, amen. Once again, thank you guys so much for letting me do chapel. I love you guys. I love doing this, and you have an amazing day. All right, bye.